Howard, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us today, John Howard from the Howard Team Home Loans in Tampa. I believe nationwide nowadays, which is kind of exciting. Um, John has been an inspiration to me because he's got like a super positive attitude and he just keeps doing over and over what a lot of people say can't be done. Uh, he hasn't been in the industry for 25 years and he doesn't have some of these bad mental habits of talking how it used to be back in yesteryear. Uh, certainly does talk about how it was in, in 2020 a few times, right, John? <laughs> yeah, I missed 2021. I was like, let's, let's have another epidemic. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, yes, there's there's unique challenges to this market. I mean, we'll probably dive into that a little bit. But, you know, today, it, it's been a couple of months of the Survivor Series we've taken off. And I think let's try to help folks reset their minds a little bit. I and mean, we're pretty close to halfway through the year. What do you find yourself doing every day or every week? that is helping you the most right now with, with just your, your momentum. I mean, like what kind of things or, or what one or two things are, do you have to do to keep moving forward? Yeah. So for me, I, I learned this a long time ago. Um, it's just like old tried and true method is that whenever someone pops into your head, give them a call. And so like never really about business. So like one day, uh, like try to fill my drive time with talking to somebody and, you popped in my head and I just called you for no reason and just to check in to see how you're doing. And you're like, Hey, do you want to speak in the survivor series? I'm like, Oh, that's a pretty cool opportunity that just popped up just because I made one phone call there or same thing with different realtors. Every time I call a realtor, it's really not asking for business. It's maybe offering like a, something like I'm hosting a happy hour or I'm doing something where I was not asking for business or I saw a Facebook post and I just want to say, Hey, I saw that post and ask about it and okay, cool. Like, hey, I got a call coming and got to let you go. But so that way, it's just always just trying to stay top of mind, which is really kind of like the theme in my marketing and how I set my team up on this. And so I got like a short presentation. I'm going to fly through the slides if that's all right. And stop me to make it more conversational. And for the people that are watching, type in questions and we'll make sure that I want this to be as, as more of a dialogue than a mile, monologue if possible. But so let's see here, slide two. So if you haven't noticed already, I'm very ADHD, right? Um, but I never know what's coming out of my mouth. But at the same time, when I'm doing buyer consultations, I have like the same 10 dad jokes built in to always say, um, you know, hey, mortgages don't operate with common sense. You know, based off what you told me, I'd give you a loan. But we need the application. We need the documents. I'm going to do an email. The secret to my success is I hired people smarter than me on here. So that way, when you pass someone off to your team, it doesn't feel like a pass off. I've already let them know that I have a team that everyone has different roles in it. Um, my, the, my marketing isn't very repeatable, but once I get the application, my team is very process driven. And I'm going to share, uh, and a lot of that I learned from MLONet. I think for people that haven't heard my story real fast was I was in financial planning for 10 years. I uh, didn't really love it too much. I got my mortgage license because I didn't understand the closing disclosure when I got my own house. I was like, as a finance major um, in college and financial advisor, like no one really taught us how to buy a house on that. And I think that's also something to keep in mind that people that you think should know things. I mean, like what we do every day People, the average consumer hasn't heard about that kind of stuff on it. And so I got my mortgage license just to learn. It became a side hustle. I go on to MLO net because my brokerage didn't have training. And I learned by watching uh, Fisher and Barker and a few other people do these videos in the military mortgage boot camp that became the VMA on that. So at night, I would just watch videos to learn about the business. Uh, I'm an unapologetic marketer. Um, everywhere I go, I let people know what I'm doing. Usually wearing a shirt that's like a veteran mortgage advisor or a Howard team home loans. And, you know, always kind of bring up a, a joke about the mortgage industry and that how I do mortgages and it's no longer that much fun, you know, but hey, someone's got to do it. And at least people know what it is that I do for a living. Um, what I feel like is my strength is I'm obsessed with the business behind the, uh, the business of mortgages. So I know we don't like to talk about the different channels here in MLO net and who is better and 
all that kind of stuff. But I came from the broker side of things. And as I was scaling, I went into like a banker broker hybrid. And then that company was very, very, very good at marketing where I learned a lot of the big marketing stuff. And then uh, they went through some financial troubles, just like a lot of mortgage companies did in 22. And I found myself having to find a new place to work. And now I'm backed by a regional bank, which I never thought I would ever be on the banking side, but it's, it has broker tendencies to it as well. And so when I go in to look at it, it's like, you know, how do I build a team? How do I scale? How do I become the top uh, originator in my area? Um, and so for me, it was building the team, getting loan officer assistance. So that way, one of the same, like got to put aces in their places um, because paperwork is not conducive to my ADHD and trying to figure out why is this error on AUS happening? What button did I not press? on that you know i got i hired people to to do that for me on it uh up until about a year and a half ago i never had a crm i was excel spreadsheets and pen and paper and who i am calling and you know even now it's still probably one of my biggest weakest points in my practice is like if you look at my google reviews i have phenomenal reviews and uh 21 i did almost 400 loans and 22 i did a little over 200 so like 600 loans in two years and I haven't really accessed like my past database as well as other top producers do on that. And so that's something that I'm continuously learning on. And I hired somebody that's really good at it to help me with it and that. Uh, VA loans have always been like a passion of mine, even though I'm not a veteran. And I always thought that maybe the veteran community would reject me because I'm a poser. Like, why is this guy wanting to uh, work with veterans? He's just trying to do this. I'm like, well, I think once people hear me talk and talk to them, they realize that I know what I'm talking about and they can hear the passion behind it and how I'm willing to help on that. Um, this was a presentation I did for my company, but like one of the questions they asked was, what's your best marketing effort post COVID? And so I do radio ads um, and that's helped me with different ways to communicate. If you have to get your value prop out in 15 seconds or 30 seconds, you know how do you get someone that hears an ad to call you? Uh, on that. And so that has helped other marketing efforts like social media or doing like a bomb bomb video out to my CRM is people don't want to listen to minute, two minute, three minute videos anymore. Like even 15 seconds seems to be too much on that. Um, but radio, surprisingly, as long as it's AM radio, like who listens to AM radio? Um, but that Fisher, is. Fisher and I do, but, but we yeah. were old. We're, we're, we're old and grumpy so hey but you have money to buy a house right yeah. and a good demographic and then on am radio you're not you're conditioned to listen to ads fm radio you are um changing the channel. the channel you're set you're going what, what's yeah. the next what's the next song on on you know white 101 whatever right yeah and then when i find an ad is kind of working then i go and find some popular podcasts to then stream on that kind of stuff for reduced purchase, like reduced rates on that. Hey, I want to jump in here because again, you say you want to be a little bit more of a dialogue, right? Um, I'm interested because you know I, I had a little bit of experience with radio advertising years ago. Um, I was always more of a direct mail type of guy, and we never really had a whole lot of success with tracking ROI from radio. Like, or, or is this something now that you feel just kind of based where our market is, based on where you're just mentioning your demo, who you're going after? Again, usually AM radio is going to be a little bit typical older demographic, a little bit more established demographic. Are you finding that's where to target some of these folks? Or are you finding it's more of a branding yeah. play that's combined with your other marketing efforts? Probably the latter there this year. Like 2023, my radio ROI, I'm barely breaking even right, right now. Um, but it is more of a branding play and mm -hmm. radio sales are down all the time. And so I just got a call on Monday that during the Tampa Bay Rays, um, games, I'm getting free ad space there right now because I've been such a long tenured client to it. They That's picked like four clients on into it. And so I'm actually after this, let me try out my script here. It's like John Howard, Howard team home loans. You're not allowed to say Tampa Bay Rays, right? So and I, we have the Hometown Heroes program here in Florida that's up to $35,000. So that's a push I'm really making this summer because now everybody can be a hero because they, you know, like they got rid of the occupation class. So that's 
going to be my marketing push for the summer is to push this down payment assistance program just to make the phone ring. And about radio, you got to give something to make people there. So like when I talk about VA loans, I talk about how I pay for appraisals, right. you know, call me now. Um, hey, I can get you up to $35,000 in down payment and closing cost assistance. See if you qualify today on that. And then since it's all sports talk radio, it's really terrible puns. Like during hockey season, don't let anyone put your VA loan in the penalty box. Go on the power play with me instead. Dude, right? I love the radio voice too. Yeah, I got it. Pick it up like, you, 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 right? you sit there in front, of the, in front of the camera and practice that, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My <laughs> wife hates it. She's like, John, <laughs> shut up. I'm like, I just want to see if you like it, you know? And then same to people on my team. I'm like, what do you think about this on that? And and so that is, it's like, it brings out unique opportunities because then when you're at the Rays game and when you're walking around uh, there, like they have that radio station on and then you hear my ad. I was like, the, wait a second. Hey, who's that I'm guy? Like, I'm like, hey guys, that's me. That's me. You know, like when I'm like waiting in line for concessions and then I'm probably wearing a Howard team home loan shirt. Like again, I'm an unapologetic marketer on that. Um, As you should be, my man. As you should be. Right. Yeah. I mean, my job is to make the phone ring. And then my team's job is to make me look good and cash the checks that my ass writes on that. And, you know, my pre-approval letter has a hundred percent closing ratio, which some realtors can't stand that I have to make everyone give me documents, but the ones that I've worked with appreciate it because they know that it's going to close right. on that. And in this market right now, I've been doing pre-underwrites, which yeah, I've never done. Are you flipping that to TBDs at this point? Every single approval. Nice. On. And it's just so that way, you know, like with this low inventory, hey, I already have them pre-underwritten with the underwriter. I just need this. It's like another selling point on it. And that's too, because volume's down. Like we have the capacity to do that. Might as well do it. Yep. On it. I love it. I love it. Um, and so ever since the 1003 became an Erla, I have not ran AUS because I've had my team built out from that. So gun to my head, 800 credit score, W2, download this app. I don't think I can get AUS approved eligible and submitted to underwriting right now. I mean, maybe on that, but I have a really, really great team that I trust that does it all. And then what motivates me is I have a lot of people that count on me on here. I built this team. We care a lot about each other. I refuse to lay someone off. Um, I don't want to cut back on marketing. So what, what changes? Where's the breaking point? Well, for me, it was my LO comp going from like 135 basis points. Now I'm down to like 70 on that. And oftentimes I'm cutting that comp to win. So like my comp isn't wonderful right now, but I'm able to keep my team and my branding going and still being able to close loans. And I always say the thing about it is like back in 2019, 2020, would you be okay with $20,000 monthly checks? You know, like, hell yeah you know it's not the sexy hundred thousand dollar checks but who cares i want to keep the damn team i i was lucky enough like to save the money to then allow me and my family to take reduced checks like one month this month i had like a, a four thousand dollars in a month that was january you know like <laughs> but i had enough revenue to pay the bills for the team um, you know, it's funny on that. I had a, this was back in 2009, 2008, 2009. Um, you know, subprime meltdown, all this type of fun stuff. Um, I was working for a, a local company here and I, I talked to the owner about marketing because I was with a company previously who had cut back as business was contracting. They really cut back on their spend, really cut back on the marketing. Everything was getting tight. I had an opportunity to talk to this guy. He was recruiting me. And he was like, I'm doubling my marketing in this, in this market. So like, see, when things are good, that's when I contract on my marketing. That's when I pull back, right? And I save that money for when things are tight. Same thing. He's like, because I got a team of 20 loan officers. I got processors. I got this. I got that. I need to keep this war chest good to go for when things are bad, not when things are good. And that's one of the things that's always kind of stuck in my head. And it's very similar to what you're talking about right there. We're going to have peaks and valleys in this business, right? Yes. When, so when you get, take advantage of the peaks and prepare for the valleys. Yes. And so that's what's so frustrating is I built my team to scale and we were scaling and it was great. And then now the volume's not there. And if I lay somebody off and then, hey, we get busy again, I need that person. Like we're like, 
at the height of it, we're doing seven to 10 applications a day and getting people answers next day on that. And like, you need to have that good team on that. And like, I, and I pay my team above average, um, you know, like they're on the higher end of LOA uh, scales on that because I want them to be well -being. I want them to be successful and to be, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> wanting to work here. And then you got to pay for top talent. You know, like I want someone that's great. I don't want to have to retrain someone. Like if I let go of one of my loan partners and say, hey, um, can you come back? Now hey, let me ask you about your team structure real quick. Again, oh. jumping around here. Well, I got it right there. All right. But this is my little team here. I have four kids under the age of six. I also want to be present in their lives. That's what motivates me. You know, it's like from 5.30 to 8 p.m., I want, I have dad time. And then from 8 p.m. to 10, I'm re responding back to emails on that. Okay. But I use my kids in my marketing, damn it. Yep. My wife's a big competitive runner. If you think my mom's fast, you see my dad closed loans. I love oh, that. Loans.com, right? But uh, I'll get back to it. So here's the team. I have Christine, who's my chief bad bitch. Joni's my closer, the processor on there. Ingrid is the killer. She's the one that follows up on all my leads. Uh, Tim is uh, now a full-fledged LO. He used to really be helping me on marketing and the junior LO, but he has now since spread his wings and he's doing really great. And then I have the, the veteran on my team that is more of like a part-time brand associate because you can't advertise on McDill Air Force Base, but I can have someone that works on McDill Air Force Base that's wearing Howard Team Home Loan shirts, damn it. Smart. Uh, on that. But this is the role here. Yep. So... If, if you get an application and documents to me by 3 p.m., the client will be called by the end of the day. If it's afterwards, it's I'll, I'll have answers by lunchtime next day on it. I'd say now I'm probably calling them no matter what with this low inventory, right? low volume. My job is to, I do every intro call. If TJ is referred to me by Fisher, I'm talking to TJ first. And I'm getting like the 15, 20 minute, get to know you. Here's how my team works. I basically do an application that's conversational. They don't even know I'm doing an application. I type up those notes. I send it to my team. And I send the intro email out there. When it comes time, I'm the one that sells the rate. Um, I have a whole process to that. I go over every final closing disclosure because my final closing disclosure presentation is like 15 minutes long with built-in dad jokes that then um, also ask for referrals and Google reviews. And then if there's ever bad news to deliver, I'm the one that's delivering bad news. Um, Christine, she does everything. She gets the file uh, ready, scrubbed, AUS approved, incomes calculated. She's sending out the pre-approval letters. She just needs to get the, the docs to my processor, Joni, with approved eligible findings. And Joni will get that loan closed. And she updates everyone every week. Ingrid, the killer, she uh, assists Christine. Like if, if we have eight or 10 applications in that day, she's taking some of those applications on that. And in the in the past, Christine would double check Ingrid, but now Ingrid has had enough repetitions that we trust her pre-approvals and she's excellent. And her, the hardest task is keeping me organized. She's like, John, you have 10 emails you need to respond to. John, have you followed up with this person? John, have you done this? I'm like, ah, shut up. But at the same time, thank God. Um, and then... Uh, Tim is self-sourcing business and helping me with, uh, I do a lot of events and videos and he's really organized that helps me on the marketing front. So again, like I take the initial call, I get the, uh, the docs out, copy the realtor, Christine does the app, Ingrid sets up the mortgage coach, sends out estimates. And then I go and I, I have a, a Zoom call with the, the buyer that I'm going over the mortgage coach. And then I open up in Compass. I share my screen. I run product and pricing with them. I let them see my 30 different investors there. We pick which one there and I show, hey, what rate do you want? Here's the cost associated with it. And right now, probably I think like it's scary selling some rates with a seven in front of it, you know, with 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 points, you know. And so it's like, hey, as a branch manager, I can do like a 25 basis point. Uh, concession here and so they can see real dollars of like when I do a concession it's actually like real dollars and they they seem to appreciate it more. so are you sending out the mortgage coach before you have your client presentation no okay no yeah I'm going on that and then we'll send out the mortgage coach after I okay. have it on it because I like 
I mean, I have a hard time really understanding everything in the mortgage coach on that, right? right? You send that out naked to um, a client. They don't know what they're looking at. So Especially I like to with, with rates today, right? Even though we're all accustomed to it after doing this for the last 18 months, you know, we still got people who are like, I really think rates want to be in the low, low fours here. Right type of thing. So, you know, if you just send out something with a six, eight, seven, five, or seven and a quarter, I yeah. mean, you, you could lose that person immediately right there. So now, yeah, so you're, you're doing the, the, the presentation, the great presentation, you're having the conversation, going over their two or three options, then Ingrid's creating the mortgage coach based off of what you're sharing with them. Yep. I get, and I get it sold. And then Christine <laughs> scrubs the file, submits it to underwriting. Joni gets it closed. I don't ever look at approvals anymore or anything like our team motto is in Joni, we trust. (laughs) And she will alert us if there's an issue. And that's when I get, when there's an issue, I then we get into problem solving. And then I go over the final closing disclosure, Ingrid files up with the appointments. Um, Obviously, right now, I'm not immune. The inventory sucks. You know, I, just this week, I had three buyers put an offer on the same property. It's like, how do you choose your favorite child? I'm like, all right, as long as you pick one of the three, I don't care, you know? And um, at the I same would, time- I would choose my daughter. Just, yeah. I, would, I would choose my daughter or my sons if that was, if that was my options. Oh, yeah. My, my second child is my favorite. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> affordability. I mean, I look at this as like, my God, your monthly payment is a $600,000 loan. They're all in payments over $5,000 a month. Like that's crazy. That's a lot of money every month, you know? And it's just like a couple of years ago, it was like $3,000 a month on it. And so like we, like it, it's, it, this is a very challenging market. And then volatility on Monday, I lock, I, I, I yesterday, yesterday was alert to lock, right? I locked two of my loans today. I found out they took out my final, my, my locked loan estimate. And they said, Hey, John, I found a better deal. Can you match or I'm leaving you? I'm like, after all of that, after sending your pre-approval, after fighting with the listing agent to get you a close, after like doing all this and like saying like, Hey, do you want to float or lock? You chose to float. We finally, I get the alert to lock because it's about ready to deteriorate. I did everything right. And now you're leaving me. Like that hurts. It's, I mean, like it's like not immune to it. And it's like, all right, well, I have to have the mindset of that I got to replace that loan with two more today. Where am I getting two apps? I got to be honest with you, the last two months, my mindset hasn't been wonderful, you know, like of like a sulking and crying, but it doesn't help. I got to go out there. I got to produce for my team. I got to produce for my family. I got to keep my team together because when this does turn, I'm going to dominate. And I, I'm, I really thought it was going to be May 10th, Barry. You know, and it got like, <laughs> and because I, I hired a part-time processor to get her all trained up, ready to go for the summer and rates are going to get better and we're going to get going. And it's done the opposite. You know, it's like, I've only gotten like six apps this week. Like I usually get six a day, you know? And so it's like, I got to go out, double up on the follow-up, follow up on, I have like six, I think it's like 68 pre-approval letters out there right now. We're hitting them like every third day. Uh, if you put any offers in, do you have any questions? Stay in top of mind. These those buyers are liars. It's mean. And the realtors, I don't even notice this, but they're all kind of mean right now. And it's because they're having trouble paying their bills right now. And they take it out on you. And they have all these different lenders calling them. And what and it's like, hey John, can you pay for my Zillow? I don't pay for Zillow. And well, hey, you know, I gotta keep my Zillow leads with this. I really appreciate everything you've done. And so like I'm losing referral partners. I used to cry about it. Now I got to go out and find two more realtors to replace that leader, realtor. So I just got to change that mindset and just get aggressive with it and deal with burnout. It's like, my God, what am I doing to myself right now? My wife's like, John, you, I have never seen you so stressed. I've never seen you so like quiet. I'm like, I'm like, well, <laughs> it's a pretty stressful market right now. And, and so it's like, you got to make sure you don't bring that stress home. Um, when I got into this business and in my first place I worked at, there's a lot of divorced alcoholics. And I'm like, I choose not to be that my life. So I got to have positive outlets. I got to make sure I don't bring it home. I got to make sure that I prioritize the family, right? And then the deals are tougher than ever been. Like my VA loan at like 65% DTI, where I have two investors that are willing to do it. And all of a sudden you find out that they ran up the HELOC on this property. And now it's like, gosh, you know, like deals are getting restructured in underwriting, which we've never had to deal with. So like, 
I'm so concerned about my 100% close ratio. But these are my guiding principles. I understand this job sucks. We see the worst in people every day. So I got to try to make it as fun as possible for myself and for my team. So I like if we, my videos on social media, mostly jokes. Um, when people do their application and submit their documents, I look at they're, they're getting financially naked. You got to make them feel comfortable, you know, stretch marks and all. Like, it's just like, like hey, thank you for this. Because when I did financial planning, very rarely did we ever get like full docs on this. Here, we're pulling credit. We're seeing everything about it. And we got to make them feel comfortable and make them feel valued. Thank them for wanting to take the opportunity to work in it. You got to believe in home ownership and building wealth. I've talked, some loan officers and realtors don't think that now is a great time to buy. Why are you in this business right now? Like go sell solar if you don't think this is a great time. Like home ownership is the key to building wealth. When I did financial planning, the people that are retiring in their uh, W-2 jobs were ones that had one or two investment properties that passive income. We're building wealth for people on that. Um, I'm working on this huge marketing campaign. I'm putting 25 grand of my own money, not branch money, into this hometown heroes with Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, doing some funny, funny videos of trying to get out there and and to to dominate this program on it. It's not perfect, but you know what? I'm doing it, you know, because imperfect action is better than perfect inaction. But it's also important to prepare too, right? Um, my team is so sick of me here and saying the answer is always no, unless you ask, you know, like, is this realtor going to meet me for lunch? I don't know. Let's find out. Cause right now they're not. So they might as well ask. And on that, the one that I really truly believe is if I don't market and get out there, these buyers are buying anyway, they're going to go to veterans United rocket mortgage. And that doesn't put them in a better situation. They're better off coming to me and my team because my rates, my fees are better. My team cares. We'll get it closed. We'll communicate effectively. Everyone will do that, right? I, I always tell um, buyers, I, I'm not one to talk trash about someone. I try to keep it professional, but friends don't let friends use Veterans United or Rocket Mortgage. And that usually makes them laugh on that. Um, I had this one mentor always talk about the you know, the most successful painter is not the one that's actually the best at painting. It's the one that's best at marketing their paintings on that. I might not be the most perfect loan officer, but I'm going to try to beat you in units and volume, damn it, because I'm going out there and marketing and selling my team and how great we are. Um, never underestimate the importance of the thank you. You know, that closer that rushed out a CD, thank you. $5 Starbucks gift card uh, on that or like, uh, $10, you know, something like just to say thank you to making an exception to getting your stuff out there. Um, an underwriter that was willing to meet with you on a Teams call to try to figure this out. Um, thank you for doing that, you know, and just because if I, I used to think, well, they know I'm thankful. Well, unexpressed gratitude is ingratitude. And that's a, one of my favorite sayings to say, hey, thank you. Like my team, it's their, literally their job to download this application and get it out. But hey, thank you for stopping. What, I know you're working on another file. This one was really important. Thank you for stopping what you're doing, right? And I like to think that they would appreciate that. And then for me, I got to trust the team. I got to sell the team. And then when times are great, reward the heck out of the team. Mm -hmm. And Kai McBride, obviously this is one of the, the Survivor Series that you did. I never really realized that's exactly what I did on it you know, until he put that out. I'm like, oh yeah. Well, this right here for me is the radio ads that can funnel down in there. And then I have a Facebook group that, you know, I try to promote little um, uh, happy hours for realtors. And for me is like Veterans United and me, no one's really heard of me. And but people have heard about Veterans United because they have like millions of dollars a month in marketing. Um, so for me, marketing creates opportunities. Opportunities create sales. Sales is your ability to convert those opportunities and applications into locks. And then your process turns those locks into closings. So you got to be good at all of them. And it, I don't know how one person does it on their own. And I think that's when you start getting, like when you start getting to five, six, seven, eight units a month, you are just so overwhelmed trying to do it all. And then one, something will fall through the cracks if you're trying to do it all. Yeah, so fish, and, that's one of the things that Fish has always preached to me about, right, is kind of being, you know, we always say in the middle. Right. Not not just scraping by, but also not a top performer. When you kind of get stuck in that middle piece, you can't become excellent 
at you know whatever your goal is. So if your goal is to go and be a top producing loan officer team, you can't do it all yourself because you'll never have the tools or the skills to get there. Like if you want to go ahead and be a great marketer, you got to be the great marketer and hand that stuff off. Fish, you can certainly talk a little bit more about it than I can, but when it's time to grow, you got to pass off some of those duties. And that's really hard. Like when you've done it yourself that whole time, I saw one of the things you said, there's like trust the team. It's hard to, to, to trust the team, especially when it's your name. I mean, you're the Howard team, right? It's your yeah. name right out there, right? So you have to have the right people and the right training. You know, it's like when, like, obviously, like one of my loan partners uh, makes the occasional mistake. Guess what? I got to own it, right? One and of the things Don and I talk about, um, we, we talk a fair amount, um, is, yeah, you got to know all the stuff. Absolutely, you got to know all the stuff. But it doesn't mean that you have to do all this stuff yourself. And you just, you have to know how it works. You have to know what your team's doing. You have to know how they're doing it. But, you know, even John admitted, well, I kind of slacked a little bit on learning, you know, what's going on with Encompass. But I trust this person so much that even, even though I've learned how to do it, I know how it works. I know they're doing their job, you know, so, so I trust them. But, you know, at some point, you just can't possibly do it all. You figure out, hey, where does my team have a weakness? Okay, I need to study this. I need to pay attention. I need to learn. I need to grow. But then I still am going to delegate that. So, you know, I think a lot of loan officers right now, they really are struggling with the idea that they have to market more than ever. And they're trying to get other people to market for them. And they're trying to buy leads and they're trying to not embrace the fact that marketing is super, super, super important right now. And um, I, I think it's... Tell me to... Go ahead, John. Take it, take it, man. So you don't have to spend money to market, right? Like I, I built up a little bit of a war chest to try to like be, have a louder voice a bit, but there's like, I found that my free marketing is probably my most effective marketing of just top of mind. Someone popped in my head. I'm going to give them a call and check in on it. And because that's authentic, right? You know, and it's something where if I get business out of it, okay. If not, I don't care. I just, you're literally just top of my mind. So I just wanted to call you and without fail, Hey, I got this idea. I got this guy. He's asking about this. Cause that's I'm like, Hey, let me just talk to the buyer. That's what I always say. Like I'd never try to get the answers to the realtors too, too much on it. I want to be the one um, that is talking to the client because a lot is lost in translations. Um, and then, so for me, the last month I was in a really poor mindset. I stopped doing my funny videos on there and it was like, why am I doing this? All I'm doing is I'm bringing in these opportunities for people to leave me as soon as after I lock them. And I'm going to create all this stress in here. And it's just like, this is so stupid. I don't want to even spend money on this. I'm like, what a loser attitude on that. And so it's not, people aren't like, it's not immune to everyone. So like, I have to like start meditating in the morning, reading books of like, just trying to get my mind right. And like, again, like today I lost two loans today all right, cool. I got to go replace them on that. And then I, I had this idea. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go out and I'm going to try to find two or three loan officers that aren't jerks. And then I'm like, hey, join my team because that'll help alleviate pressure off that. Well, next thing you know, I felt like I was that same LinkedIn recruiter that just reaches out to me every damn day. And I'm like, oh, I'm turning into the person I don't like. You know, like everyone's going to say they have great rates and great teams and processes and on that. And it's like, how do you communicate that? I'm like, you know what? I'm okay being you like the only. You say, you say, you know, Fisher, what do I do about this? I say, John, why don't you just jump on MLO net and be cool and people will want to talk to you a whole lot more. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, just, right, be let's cool. see what happens. just be yeah. cool. Yeah, you know, and so like for me, again, the marketing is something I've always enjoyed. Um, on it. And these are the things that I've done is like radio and a bus bench. I have one, I used to have five bus benches, I have one. And people send me texts on there. I'm like, ah, oh, come take a seat, you know, you know take a rest with John and give me a call here. You know, like not only do I get your loan closed and but I keep it comfortable when you're walking on the streets, like John, you're so, your jokes are terrible. I'm like, I don't care. Um, sponsor the baseball field. Anywhere my kids have events, I'm sponsoring something on that. And then I'll make a video of my kid in front of the baseball field <laughs> on that of like, hit a, like my boy is good at baseball. He's getting ready for the baseball season. Like you should be getting ready for the home buying season on that. So like, again, my kids are expensive. They got to earn their keep, damn it. Um, hosting happy hours was what I really built my business on in the very beginning. And then I got like a home inspector, home insurance, and we all put $200 to the bar and I go to the bar and I ask them, Hey, can you give us reduced, um, 
cost on drinks or like give us free apps. I'm going to bring 20, 30 people. They're all realtors. After the two first drinks, they'll probably drink five more. You know, like our industry is known for drinking. <laughs> and so that, that that worked out tremendously where I, because I always feel like I'm better in person than just calling on the phone to somebody. And let me invite you to a happy hour and, and meet. And I even let other loan officers come and just kind of bothers me a little bit. But at the same time, it's, um, people know I'm the one that sponsored it on that. And so I use it as like a real estate happy hour, bring people together in the community. Teaching classes, that's a, like, it's a lot harder now setting these appointments, calling these uh, brokers and trying to get a class in there. Um, but it still can be done. Again, the answer is always no unless you ask. And then the same thing of like, when I do a radio, I turn that radio script into a video. And then I try to leverage their networks to reshare my stuff on that. Um, my goal was always to do like one educational, two funny, one product specific, one VA, maybe a little market update, kind of do what the mortgage nerd does with the uh, the MBS highway um, showing that. But I found that when I started doing that, the people I had locked, like, oh, the market got better. I'm like, ah, you know, I'm not going to do this uh, MBS highway stuff anymore. Um, networking groups. I used to do the B&I groups. To me, it was too much of a time commitment, but it did work quite a bit when I was there. Um, I got involved with the my uh, university that I went to, the community events. I created uh, a dad's group. And so it's like once a month, we go meet at a bar to go talk about our kids. But really, it's just the neighborhood dads getting together on that. But that's a little trick, fellas. You know, if your wife says, hey, you can't leave. Hey, it's going to a dad's group. I'm going to meet other dads here. Um, uh, I got on to the Civic Association. My kids' uh, elementary school got part of the dad's group. And um, the random check-ins. My last thing I want to talk about is like the Valspar. bar. That's the one thing I spend like eight or $10,000 one time to be a sponsor of the Valspar bar championship. I used to be the golf cart sponsor this year. I was the official porta potty sponsor where again, just try to make people laugh a little bit where finish your loan business. By the time you finish your business, uh, your online lenders approval letter isn't worth this toilet paper. That was inside every, all 300 porta potties in there. Get a real one instead. On uh, front of the, they had a VA appreciation hole. And I said, don't let anyone poop on your VA loan. You've earned that benefit. Use it. I won't take any poop and we'll get your offer accepted on that. And um, I should be your first. This this was like in the luxury ones. I should be I like your first. The place. luxury porta potty. I like it. <laughs> you know, it was nice. And everyone loves a good number two. Let me take a second look at your quote. So like, and then again, leveraging my pregnant wife, you know, hit a, uh, it's a slam dunk on that. The FLA25K.com. That's the hometown heroes when they were given $25,000. Now I got FLA35K because they've increased it to 35000 on that, so like that's like a little thing where just turn it into it. I lost a uh, fantasy football. I got last place in my fantasy football league, so I had to go stand on the corner. So I turned that into a marketing event. Um, my, I was the officiant for my sister in law's wedding. Well, that thing doesn't expire. So when you have uh, fiancés wanting to be on the loan together for VA, send us in the courthouse. Full service here. I'll get you married. I'll be your officiant on that. Uh, my wife is literally pregnant here. And I asked what's harder, originating loans or delivering birth, like while my wife is giving birth um, on that. So like, again, like just not taking yourself too serious. And then on this one, I did this Incredibles video. If anyone out there knows how to get your Facebook and uh, Meta account, um, right now I'm permanently blocked from doing ads because I thought I did this great Incredibles video. I tagged Disney, I tagged Incredibles and guess it's uh, some copyright issues here. So, uh, dude, I just can't. Mess, message me offline. I'll, I'll help you get your, your account back. I mean, I, I, I'm just, I'm prohibited from doing sponsored ads on my business account. So now I do sponsored ads on my personal account. <laughs> um, and that's really all I have. But, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, awesome stuff. I tell you, my favorite thing about all of this is one, with your posting, so many of us take ourselves so seriously in this business, right? So, right. Fish, uh, turn off the screen share. Um, 
So, so, so many of us take ourselves so seriously in this business. You're out there, you're leveraging real things in life. You're in, in, infusing your humor into it, your personality into it, but you're taking all these opportunities to build your brand, right? Which is so important, especially you mentioned earlier, Rocket, you know, they've got all this money. They're going across the entire country. You're able to go ahead and focus on your local brand, your brand where you're doing business on there. People get to know who you are. And then, yeah, reference it back to what we talked about earlier. You start to have that, that symbiotic relationship of your, your bench and your social media and your radio ads and wearing your t-shirts and doing all this stuff. You know, it all goes from one plus one plus one equaling three to one plus one plus one equaling six, right? Because they all work together and that. So, man, just love what you're doing right there. Um, I think, well, actually, Fish, I've done most of talking. What do you have for John? What questions do you have? Comments, questions? Yeah, what? let's let's There's... just bring it home, let everyone get back to the day. But, like, I want to throw one last thing out there. I, I appreciate the John shout it out to Emma Lonette. I mean, I, I'm not sure that TJ and I were – we're trying to create a how to be a loan officer, you know, community, but certainly a lot of folks have learned a lot of stuff from different guests and things that we've done. You know, I, I do want to kind of just ask real quick, John, what resources would you recommend folks that are watching or watching the replay that can kind of pick up some of the things that you picked up over the last couple of years in addition to MLONet? Uh, what kind of resources in the industry that have, do you recommend? Well, I mean, I always, it's like, we're all wearing the veteran mortgage advisor stuff on here. I'm not. Um, I, did, I didn't get the memo today, fish. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a I'm a big believer in that because right now, I mean, the VA loans, like that's the one thing I go to the realtors and say, hey, I, obviously I want all your business, but when you think of VA, think of me because every VA loan that doesn't close reinforces the negative stereotype that they're harder on that. And I got a great uh, presentation. I'd love to do it for your brokerage or just for you and yourself. And, you know, and I just always find a way to bring in uh, VMA. But because of that, like that community is so strong. Like I've built legitimate friendships with my competition where we help each other close loans that we're not getting paid on. And it's like, Hey, have you tried this? Have you done that on that? So it's a great community where, and then like you learn stuff that every day, on it so it's like educational for it i thought i'm pretty darn good at vma at va loans but every day i learn something new and because of that something i learned i get something closed that other people can't get done and then i get known for that but like this year already just year to date i'm over 10 million dollars just in va loans on that and that's like probably the only reason why my branch is still afloat right now um through it so like that was the niche that i found and then like MLO net uh, again, like before I got into this industry, I was in the, in the wholesale channel uh, going through some of uh, those, like I reached out to some of the old account executives to uh, like, just anytime they have some type of trainings, I'm not afraid to hop on an MI training to learn something new on that. So I always try to find something um, that I, maybe I'm weaker in if I have some time spend 20, 30 minutes on a webinar to learn something here in the background. So always be constantly learning. And um, right now, just constantly prospecting and just know you're going to get your heart broken at some point uh, from someone that you went out of your skin for with credit repair. And you probably have four or $500 in rapid rescores. And then they leave you over an eighth of a point. <laughs> and it's just one of those things that it's it's just our industry and unfortunately we got to get through this and i'm confident it's going to turn around i don't know when but i'm going to do whatever i can to keep my team together because once it does turn i think the faucet's going to turn on in a hurry and i don't have to rebuild retrain or do anything and it's just back to the 10 apps a day let's go Awesome, man. I, I, it's going to turn around. I believe we are past time. Like we're overdue for it to start to turn around. Obviously a lot of crazy things happening, but you know, what the hell do I know? I'm just another guy who, who watches all the same content that everyone else does. So I'm going with the, with the, with the glass half full approach to this, but John, man, seriously, awesome stuff. It's always great catching up with you. We've been 45 minutes on this and you have been kept everyone engaged. We're getting great comments in the group and on the chat right here. Uh, we always love having you on, man, so we appreciate it. Fish, why don't you go ahead and wrap this up for us, bud? 
All right. Well, I'm going to tell everybody John Howard's getting a free shirt from me because of how hard he worked today. 100%. You know, like I'm going to let him spend 50, 60, 70 bucks in the VMA swag store, get himself some extra shirts for him and his team. Just, I, I appreciate you trying to get everybody cheered up and moving forward. It is possible to close loans. There are people out there. Like John said, you just got to be marketing. You're going to get your heart broken. You may have to take a commission hit or whatever, but do what you can to keep your team going, to keep moving forward. Uh, we're going to try to get back to two or three Survivor Series a month. But honestly, Barker and I have been working really hard to emulate John a little bit and you know keep our own personal teams producing and making money as well. So, so we uh, appreciate you, MLO Net. If you want to be a guest and you got an important message for the community, hit us up. We'll try to get you on in the next few weeks here. That's all I got. We'll put the replay out there. Any other questions, just message us. And again, if you appreciate John, reach out to him. Tell him, you know, if he might be licensed in a state that you need help in. Shoot him over a loan. Repay the favor of him helping with, with a handout to him. So that's all we got, yeah. guys. It's going to be prestige worldwide here shortly. There you go. Prestige worldwide. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I'm on it. Keep an eye out. We'll have the next.